Welcome to Modern Musings, conversations with the maiden, mother, and crone, where we look at ourselves and the world through the lens of the 21st century. Hi, and welcome back. This is your hostess, Cindy Murray, and I'm here today with Amber Garvin and Kristen Hessler. Hello. Hey. And I remembered your names correctly. Hey, hey, hey. Kudos to me. Because, <laughs> like, you don't know us. I know. Well, you know, you're, you'll always be Kristen Murray to me. And then my so, name will be changing soon. And yours it's will really be changing. funny because at work I have, like, Kristen Murray on some things and Kristen Hessler on other things. <laughs> and sometimes people are like, who's Kristen Murray? <laughs> <laughs> That's I'm funny. like, oh, sorry. I didn't realize they never changed that over. Let me fix that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So um, today, I'm, I, uh, if, you've, if you've been here before, welcome back. If this is your first time joining us, thanks for joining us, and we hope you'll stick around and check us out. Today, we're talking about memory keeping, and um, one of the reasons I wanted to bring this up today is because this Saturday coming up is National or International Scrapbook Day, and I, we talk a lot about memory keeping and scrapbooking and things like that um, on here. Kristen and I actually have a a long time hobby of doing memory keeping of um, you know trying to scrapbook our memories or you know there's there's a lot of different ways to do that and a lot of people say well isn't scrapbooking kind of a something that went away nobody really does that anymore do they. But you would be surprised. There's still quite a few people who do it, but maybe not in all of the traditional ways that you might think of. So that's what we're talking about today. Um, I I just kind of wanted to bring up some different ways that you can um, preserve your memories for, you know, future generations, for your children, for your family or whatever. And we've talked about uh, on the podcast before our um, interest in genealogy and family histories and how stumbling across some of those artifacts, uh, how important they are because those give us clues to our family's heritage and, and how important it is to pass that on to future generations because the, the technologies that we use today um, such as our cell phones and the internet, Facebook, Instagram, or whatever, they're not going to exist so- at some point in the future. So it's it's important to preserve physical copies of things that can still be accessed at some point in time by future generations. And so that's um, kind of what we're talking about. And I just want to kind of open it up and talk to you guys about how how important is keeping those family memories and uh, and your own personal memories. How how important is that to you? And what are some of the ways that you preserve those memories for your family? Kristen, you want to start? I was going to let you start because I probably have like a lot to say. But um, okay, so I don't scrapbook in fact I um just kind of started scrapbooking what in December it with December daily yes yes uh, <laughs> so I mean I had made kind of one when I was in middle school uh mainly what i normally do is I don't really do like the like scrapbooking part with the whole memory keeping, I typically make kind of collage albums mm-hmm. with no words, just pictures. Right. Or um, just regular photo albums with no journaling or stickers or anything like that, uh-huh. just pictures. Though That's really what I had been doing before I started scrapbooking last December. <laughs> Now, as a writer, can I ask you, do you also journal or or keep a diary of some sort? Uh, because I'm when I'm talking memory keeping, I'm I'm thinking that to be inclusive of written word um or whatever, you know, however oh. you want to keep those preserve those stories. Oh, most certainly. Um I know I've talked about this before on different earlier podcasts. 
I keep a all-purpose notebook Mm -hmm. that is a catch-all for everything that is going on in my life, whether it's a new poem that I have written or a new story that I've written. It also holds recipes, lists, and currently wedding planning notes and drafts Mm -hmm. that Mm -hmm. I am drawing out and writing out and... um, even down to uh, pen checking to see if the ink works or not. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I've done those too. And yeah. I also glue pictures in there mm-hmm. or tape sticky notes. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it kind of becomes like a catch-all, the um, all-purpose notebook. So whereas, I guess, not like a traditional scrapbook, it's kind of like a scrapbook or timeline of my life as mm-hmm. I am living it. And uh, now, like, uh, I've kind of branched out as far as all-purpose notebooks is concerned. I mean, I I keep a separate one for all things school. Mm-hmm. And I keep a separate one for our podcast, Modern Musings, notes for that. And then I have my regular all-purpose notebook that I carry with me everywhere and write in and everything like that. And so and you keep all of your APNs. So yes, you could go back to like 10 years ago mm-hmm. and, yeah, and I like have like in, a little snapshot of you in the everyday, like yeah. day-to-day mm-hmm. going <laughs> I haven't on. done that in a long time, but I started my junior year in high school with these APNs. Yeah, I started my junior year in high school and have had... Uh, sometimes it takes three years to fill up. Sometimes it takes one year. Sometimes it takes nine months. I just, uh, go on to the next one and I start each one with a quote and a little saying, some magical words, and then I end it with a quote, some magical words. Sometimes just, uh, see you later. And I, of course, I have, um... My mistake was like when I was putting them together after I moved because they're all on like one shelf in order was that I didn't put like this is number one, uh, number two, number three, not on all of them. Some of them I did uh-huh. and then some of them I didn't. I mean, I obviously know, I obviously know my very first one, but like say like number two didn't have a number two, but number five did, you know, so That's something that I'm going to, whenever I pack up again, go through and maybe like put like a number one sticker or whatever. So you can guess like based on what your notes were, where you lived and when you might use Are Are any of your entries dated or at all? Um, I try to remember to date them. Like Mm -hmm. uh, even if it's just the top of the corner, Mm -hmm. the date that I wrote that list Mm -hmm. or whatever, I try to remember to date them. I don't always do it, but for the most part... Some of the in, the entries are mostly dated, and um, I don't keep up with it as much as I have in the past. Like there are some years where it, I'll do like three in a year, and then there are some where it's taken me five years to fill up a notebook. So it's really kind of inconsistent as far as um, how like how it goes and everything, but I do try to keep dates in there and I definitely start it with a date, like what day I started it Mm -hmm. and then what day that I ended it. And I typically have a kind that I really like the ringed ones, the kind that don't easily come out. Okay. Although currently my one is not a ringed one. It's just like a regular a bound, diary. Bound diary. Yeah, journal. like a bound yeah. diary. And I typically don't like those because I like to open it and like put put it around. And oh, uh-huh. the bound diaries, they're hard to like keep open on the page that you want them to. So a lot of times I rip it apart mm. while I'm trying to take notes or hold a pen in there. And I'm very like a, I I know like the last APN I had before this one, which is why I switched to this one because it was the only journal I had at the time. The last one I had literally fell apart because I was so rough on it. Mm. <laughs> so I had to ba- bind it back together and then I didn't use it after that. I just, uh, it was only like halfway through 
I just kind of moved to another one because I didn't want to mess it up it. even yeah. more I, yeah. than it you was. You know, it'd be really cool. You know how like sometimes on your APN you'll start like a list and then there'll be like half of the page that you don't use. Mm -hmm. Or you might put a title on something and then it never comes to fruition. That page kind of gets yeah. wasted. Or you use it to scribble to see if a pen works. Yeah. <laughs> and then the next time you need it, you need like a fresh piece of paper. So you pick the next page. Yeah. It would be kind of cool if you went back and started like adding pictures of yourself. From, the, from that time, time period, period or whatever. Yeah, yeah. that would be yeah. fun. Because yeah. then it really puts like a stamp of you in it. Well, and it and it kind of, well, or stickers, even stickers or something. Mm -hmm. that can, mm -hmm. Then it kind of makes it um, more scrapbooky also. I, and it's actually very similar to something I did a few years ago, um, which was, uh, I called it a memory planner. And so it was a, my my planner um mm -hmm. when i when i was through with the week or the month or whatever i would go through and find some pictures from that week and just stick them in the what few blank spots like the there random, were random yeah. just random and weird photos and yeah like i bought sonic phone. and i here's a picture of my sonic or Ashley and I went to lunch and i took a picture of my lunch so i'll just stick that in there um or that weird rainbow that double rainbow that came up in the sky double after it rainbow. rained or something, you know, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I, I just kind of filled it up with stuff like that and little random quotes and stickers. And, um, I, th I felt like that was a really easy, simple way to document my life because mm -hmm. right there already, here's my day. You can see what my day and my week looked like because mm -hmm. I had all these lists of things to accomplish and I checked them off as I did them. And then I added pictures too. So yeah, yeah, it, that was, I thought that was kind of a fun way to do it. Mm -hmm. um, That's a, I used to um, have like a little planner that I carried around with me. I want to say through high school, like I had a couple of different ones, which is what started me on the planner. But I had like one of those little like sticker you take a picture and it like printed out into a little tiny sticker. Oh, sticker photos, yeah. Yeah, one yeah. of those sticker yeah. photos things. And I used in uh in high school, like if my friends and I did something, we would do like a sticker photo and it would come out as like a little teeny tiny sticker. And um I would just put it in my little planner. Yeah, oh, yeah. Cool. Well they still make um I don't know about specifically that sticker mm -hmm. maker. Um, but there is the uh, sprocket? sprocket, the sprocket printer uh -huh. um, that prints like a two by three photo, which actually fits in the happy planner boxes, you know, oh. and, and a lot of people will print those pictures and put them in their in their planner. So I know you can print those out onto sticker paper as well, I think. Yeah, it is sticker paper. The oh, the zinc the, the zinc, zinc paper okay. is is a sticker photo paper. Yeah. Oh, very they're cool. They're not the best printers. I mean, they're, you know, they're not they're not pretty photos. If you're like a real snob about what your photos look like, they're not it. <laughs> but if you're just looking for something quick to stick in there, you know, they're they're cool and handy and pretty inexpensive so yeah and it just prints it right on this photo sticky photo paper you just peel the back off and mm -hmm. stick it down yeah, yeah that um that's kind of uh I never really thought about like using my like I've kept all my APNs I'm not as um dedicated to utilizing my APN as Amber is because I started using like a day planner to make notes in mm -hmm. and then I really started heavily using my um iPhone notes to make yeah, notes I do and that I, as well I pretty much keep a lot of my brain dump to my iPhone now um but I do have a few of those little notebooks and um I, it's kind of fun to go back and turn to those um because I think, like, my APN, I use that kind of like people use as a bullet journal now. Like, I loved just sitting down with it and writing, like, oh, these are the things that I'm into right now. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I still have those little spirals because I just used regular old spirals back in the day. And uh, I have a couple of those. Um, we were talking about memory keeping and all sorts. And it made me think of I have, like, a foot locker mm -hmm. out in my garage and there's quite a few things in that footlocker from 
over the years that I've just kind of been like mementos. Wanna, yeah. Yes, I just want to keep this forever, you know, kind of thing. And uh, so I have a couple of those APNs in there. And, like, I have my baby blanket and a couple of my stuffed animals. To me, that's memory keeping, too. It is, sense. absolutely. And uh, we Memorabilia started, of whatever I kind. started adding some of Raina's stuff in there. We went through, like, some of her baby books, you know, because she's 12 now. So we were cleaning off her bookshelf because we got to make room for all these paperback books that she's into, like Goosebumps and Babysitter's Club and stuff. So mm-hmm, we started mm-hmm. taking out all of the hardback you know kid books out and there were a couple of them her mom used to sell um it was like a direct sales kind of Mm -hmm. thing but it was books for kids and so she has quite a few they're like personalized they have her name in them so um you know her mom would pick out the the story and then you would alter the characters names Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to family members so she has quite a few of those like four or five of those so we put those in in the trunk because they're, you know, that something a, that an she'll want when or whatever. she's, yeah. yeah, when she's older, she'll probably like to have that. And I have a couple of things, like one of my Gumby puzzles. I used to have one of those, like, giant, like, Oh, I remember board, that. The little like cardboard board. Board puzzle. Yeah. Yes. And I, the one with them jumping out with the parachute. Yes, I remember that. I still have that puzzle in there. And I think we went on a trip to Mazatlan, and we did, like, some pottery painting uh-huh. um, at the hotel. Yeah, they we, had, yeah. like, activities, and I kept that in there. And there's just a bunch of random things. You know, they're just not, like, I don't want them, like, laying around all over the house. So we just put them away in the trunk. And it's kind of fun because when I go add something to it, I open it up, and I'm like, oh, hey, it's blah, 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 because I kind of forget You get what's to in look there. through those things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I do. I go digging through it. And I have, like, letters from my friends in high school. Like, we used to pass letters back. So I had saved, like, a whole – like, you know, we used to sell candy at school, and I saved a whole candy box. Oh, my gosh. Of letters. Oh, not the candy. Okay. Oh. Now, <laughs> oh, yeah, that would have been really gross. Now, I saved the box. It was like a whole, like, giant boot shoe box kind of size. And it was just full of folded up football, like, you know. Oh, yeah, those little. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I know yeah. what you're talking about. Yeah. And I just, that was ridiculous to sit and read through those. Oh, it was I just bet. like, I want to say, who are I, you people? <laughs> I have like one of those little like cookie tins full of letters mm-hmm. somewhere, maybe in storage or something like that. Um, mine are all in my file cabinet right here behind mm-hmm. me. So I, I took mine all, what, what few I managed to, yeah. to escape with, you know, my, uh, my parents' house burned down when Kristen was a baby, and I had left most of my belong, a lot of my treasured belongings there. You know, when when I moved out and got married, and uh, so a lot of that stuff was gone. But what little I had managed to bring out with me over time, or whatever, I have those, and they're they're like all nice and neat. In a, uh, in file, a little folder. file folder, yeah. <laughs> in my and one of these days, I'm gonna probably like scrapbook those or something, mm-hmm. bind them in a book of some sort um, to preserve them a little better or whatever. But yeah, there's there's so many ways to preserve those items, and like you're talking about your your trunk that you have. I have a, a, a ah, hope my, chest. Yes, thank you. My brain just went. Bleh. Um, I have a hope chest that belonged to my mother-in-law and, um, and she passed it down to me and it's just full of treasured items from, uh, you know, both my children from Mark uh, and from me, um, mostly stuff of the kids. Like, um, I used to keep all their t-shirts in there, but then I started making t-shirt quilts, which we've talked about, but I have, um, scout uniforms, um, all the little merit badges and stuff and, um, you know, little pieces of artwork that the kids have made. And I have a music box that hung on both of their cribs when they were little, the little bunny with the ears, mm-hmm. remember that? And, um, you know, just different things like that, that, uh, blankets, baby blankets that were special because they were made by friends or family or whatever. And, and some different things like that. But, um, yeah, that's another way of preserving those, those of memory. It's, it's memory keeping because when you pull those things out, you remember how important the, how significant those things were at the time that you put them away or whatever, Mm -hmm. because like one of the things that's in, uh, my hope chest is 
a blanket that actually belonged to Kristen. My grandmother made it. And it's this little green gingham. I was literally thinking about that blanket. <laughs> the little gingham mm-hmm. check blanket. Um, and it has a, <laughs> it's the fuzzy bunny blanket. Um, it has a little appliqued bunny on it that was made out of some kind of fuzzy material. And I don't remember what the material was. It was probably like terry cloth or something. But my son, you know, Kristen had it when she was little. And then it got passed down to my son when he was born. And that was his favorite blanket. And he carried it everywhere with him for years. And he would he would cry if that blanket got misplaced or something. We One Christmas, we were visiting family, and it got left behind. And we had to go over, back over to my aunt's house to go get the stupid blanket because he would not go to bed without that blanket. And so that's in there. And every time... I open that chest and see that blanket. I'm reminded of my son when he was little. And that was so important to him, that fuzzy bunny blanket. So, um, so that's one of my things about these memories. And, you know, a lot of people say, well, I don't have to have that. I can have the memories without that. But for me, those treasured items or the scrapbooks or the stories, the journals, the diaries, Mm -hmm. those things are the prompts that prompt my memory because as you get older. Yeah. I hadn't thought about that blanket until you said there was, you know. Yeah. You don't, you don't think about those things and the older you get and the more memories you acquire, the less likely you're going to spontaneously recall one of those memories. Mm -hmm. And, but it's great to have those memories. Those are treasured moments. Those are the things that make life sweet. Mm -hmm. And, and so I like having those memories and having that prompt, even if it's just a picture Mm-hmm. of it um to to do that but i like to add i like to have that physical item there are some of those physical items that i've kept and you know i'd like to pass those down to grandchildren you know when steven has ch- ch- grandchildren or children of his own you know if he has children of his own um then i can pass that to them and and it can be another treasured item again But I will also probably do, you know, I've got pictures of him with that blanket. I will probably tell a story and use that photograph to illustrate that story of his, of how important that blanket was for him. And that, that too will, so not only can I pass that memory on to someone in the family and it can start new memories for them. But then I can recall that memory as well with the stories that I've told. Mm -hmm. Um, And I I do like to do the written story with the photographs. Um, And I think I've talked before about the Becky Higgins, uh, my modern story method, which is basically just a written bound book or it could be a bound book or it could just be printed pages stuck in a notebook Um, But she has like a a whole format for that where you just drop your story in it, print it out and, you know, put your picture on it and it's done. And uh, I like that format very well for that kind of thing because there's the family story. And so someday when Stephen's children see that blanket or when they're grown and they remember that blanket, then they can connect it to the story right? of how important it was to him. Right. And I think a lot of people think, ah, oh, no one's going to care about that. I don't think that it's necessarily that maybe the people in your immediate downline, right. you know, your children they, they may, may not, not, they may not, but yeah. your grandchildren actually only get to know their grandparents in just sh- that short, short time. while and, and not very intimately and only in the their older stage you know like yes. my grandparents you know were older people and that is one thing that, like i wish i could have known like mom mark's mom and dad like when they were you know my age mm-hmm. you know just kind of like see a little piece into their world and all we have are you know just a few photos but to have like stories and stuff like that um i think is really neat well it is you know and it goes back to um my father-in-law was in world war ii he was uh he was a pilot and he was also um he was actually a uh radio communications officer on a bomber plane i believe um and 
he had his all of his logbooks. He had photographs from his service and everything. And at one point in time before he passed away, Mark got really interested in his life, you know, before before that, you know, because he was he was an older gentleman, you know, when when Mark was born, because Mark was kind of a later in life baby. And um, and so Mark, you know, got to spend a lot of time with him um, for, there for a while, um, just kind of recording his stories. And um, they went through his trunk and he talked about all these things. And lo and behold, he had stacks and stacks and stacks of photographs of girls. <laughs> he was quite the ladies man. And he was a very handsome handsome young man also um but to see that side of him even you know even for mark and and me um to see that side of him because he was already in his 60s maybe 70s when mark and i got together so he was already an older man and and to see that young side of himself and you know and for mark to see that side of him and and to see these really pretty pictures of his mother when she was really young. And no, when you're 20 or 30 years old, you don't care about those things. But as you start to get older, then looking at your parents, you become more interested in what their lives were. Because you realize, oh, I had a life too. And I'm very different from the way I was when I was that age. I wonder how they are different from the mm -hmm. way they were. And then, and then also like your grandparents, like you said, you're, you're a genera you're a whole generation removed from them. Well, two generations, I guess, technically, but, mm -hmm. um, but so to, to read their stories or to see their pictures and have them talk to you about what their life was like, it was completely different mm -hmm. from what you have now. Um, I was very fortunate that my grandmother, convinced her mother my great-grandmother to write her memoirs um and my grandmother typed them up for her and we got uh she wrote everything up until the point where she met my grandmother's father and started dating him and so and it was the most fascinating story um you know it's all in her own words and it told about the hard life that she lived um, about her father passing when she was very, very young and her mother and siblings coming to Texas in a covered wagon, crossing the Red River in a covered wagon um, to come to Texas. And, um, you know, it, it the hard life they had, you know, they were cotton farmers and um sharecroppers and, and, and things like that and the hard life that they lived and living through uh, the, the influenza epidemic, you know, and World War I and things like that. And so that story really gave her depth for me. I loved her anyway, um, but I pictured her as this old woman, you know, because she was an old woman when I was a kid. And I looked up to her and I thought she was a very talented crafter and, um, and things like that. But then reading her story made her a person for me. And mm -hmm. I'm so glad that I had that. And, you know, maybe, maybe other people don't care about your story right now, but I guarantee somewhere down the line, there will be someone who does who wishes they had what I have there. Um, so I, I, I think it's important. I wonder what um, social media has to play in our future. I know we have like talked about ancestry recently, uh, a few podcasts back and stuff. And, um, but I don't think we ever talked about this, but you know, just thinking about now, like you're on Facebook, uh, like my Facebook goes back all the way to 2009, I think, yeah, or yeah. before that, maybe, because I did it while I was in college, so probably 2005. Well, probably before that, because I think mine goes back to uh, 2010. Yeah, I think mine goes back to 2005. Facebook um, started in like 2004, so I'm yeah. going to say like uh, our, we've had Facebook since it started, Yeah, like it, since it became came to UNT and it was just a 
college thing. Yeah. yeah. We had it. But but my thought was, you know, you are putting memories and pictures and stuff mm-hmm. on there and uh tagging, you know, geo tagging yourself right. all over the right. world. And I'm curious what that will look like, um, you know, 100 years from now, mm-hmm. where, like, right now we're like, golly, I can't even figure out who, like, my, you know, great, 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 great grandmother, you know, mm-hmm. who they were or where they lived or anything like that. So um, I, I find that fascinating that, <laughs> you know, like, my great, great, great grandkids are going to find me on Facebook. You know? Well, at the same time, Facebook probably will not exist in the way that it does now. Right. I mean, I mean, look at MySpace. MySpace, does it even exist at all anymore? You can mm, still look at it. I think, right. um, not really. I mean, yes and no. But a lot of the things like, like the, uh, well, the guy that owned MySpace kind of sold out. And, yeah. You well, know, gave up. Gave well, up, yeah. Yeah, it, beca- it it couldn't fight with Facebook, and it became, well, like the all the bands kind of took it over. It became a music forum. And then, but also at the same time, like, um, like on my page, I had um, licensed backgrounds and stuff that I had gotten from some a third party, you know, and added it on there. Well, that's all gone. That's all gone. Yeah. So all of those things don't exist anymore. So I don't even know if my page is up. I wouldn't even know how to find it if it did. Um, and I had a page for me and a page for my business. So, um, but those, that, you know, I don't think they exist anymore. So I, I suspect, especially as I watch Facebook and Instagram morph into meta um, you know, which is their parent company is called Meta, and they're yeah. really promoting the metaverse. Um, now, I really suspect that in a lot of ways, the Facebook as we know it, in very short order, it's will very one cease. dimensional right now. I it imagine is. It will be more. It will be more three dimensional. Yes, and and the things that are there from the way way back are not going to be necessarily part of it because they can't move that forward in that same frame set um if that makes any sense because Mm -hmm. they are so one-dimensional you know it's just photos and stories on your wall yeah whereas the metaverse will start to become 3d interactive virtual interactions right yeah. and and so i i don't think those things will exist i really don't the i don't historic think historic data will I, kind of become by the wayside yeah i think it'll, it'll be, be like i think it'll be deleted kind of stuff yeah, yeah. Could I, be. I because you know you you've only got so much server space you oh, know right. you can't well and if you look at the earlier conversations on facebook you would go on someone's wall Mm -hmm. and make a comment and then they would go to your wall and make a comment so if you scroll all the way back to the beginning on those early facebook um maybe you know like right when they started opening Mm -hmm. up to other people that were not college students it was like if you look on people's wall posts it's like very one-sided conversations oh yeah yeah they didn't have it wasn't a comment or a reply it was Mm -hmm. just a post on their wall yes i miss that (laughs) Do you miss being poked? <laughs> oh my no. god! You can still poke people. You just okay. don't ever really get like a. I don't. I've never seen. I haven't seen yeah. the poke. Makes button sense. On there in a it kind of goes by the wayside because yeah. now you can message people. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. Now, and you but used to be able to like. Now people wave hi to you. Write blogs on there, and you don't. You can't write blogs anymore. Oh, right. I remember that. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, that, and really social media is another way of memory keeping. A lot of people Mm -hmm. use that digital medium to preserve their things, or they put their photos in the cloud or on Instagram or whatever. So that, you know, that is another way to do it. And of course there is um, the traditional scrapbooks, but traditional scrapbooks too have changed Mm -hmm. um, because they're not just the nine and a half or eight and a half by 11 or a... 12 by 12, you know, ring bound or post bound book anymore. Um, you know, now people. Oh God, just photo albums too, because yeah. who gets their film developed? Nobody anymore? gets their film Nobody. developed anymore yeah. unless they're scrapbooking people... it in some way. Right. Um, yeah. and, and when we scrapbook, you know, Kristen and I use that term very loosely to mean a lot of different things. So, um, I have, 
books that have six by eight pages, like my December daily, um, that I consider that a scrapbook. So, um, it's a very small format, short format, but it's still a scrapbook. Yeah. Um, I've also done the traveler's journal, which we've talked about where we, um, take a, what is it? A four by eight little paper, paper fold folded, stapled book thing. And, and, you know, basically journal our trip and throw a few pictures or what, or drawings in it. Um, so that's another way to memory keep that a lot of people do The we've talked about project life, which, um, is, a another form of the scrapbooking in a, in a note, in a, uh, ring bound binder, uh, with pages that have little pockets and you take your pictures and you put them in the little pockets. So it's really more like a photo album, mm-hmm. um, with those little pockets. And then some people, a lot of people put, um, decorative cardstock or sentiment cards or stamped things or whatever in it in those pockets as well to make it cute um you can see those on our um i have some on my instagram feed that you can look at and i'll i'll link those but um you know there's there's lots of different ways um i i consider the digital bound books that you get from um, Snapfish or Shutterfly or, or whatever keeping. those mm-hmm. that is also memory keeping because you're taking your photos, combining them with maybe some captions or journaling, and some decorative elements from yeah. provided by the publisher, and you're printing out a book. Um, and those are great. I've done several of those um, for my trips before. Um, I did a Disney World. I made one of those for my future in-laws for Christmas oh, this yeah. last year from our vacation that we took together over the summer. Those are, those are fun. I love and doing those. That's it, a fun way to do There is a creative it. element to do that. It is very much like virtual online scrapbooking mm-hmm. that you can get to print out because you can change the layouts and change the sizes mm-hmm. of the picture. And the backgrounds. Um, and yeah. Very much... Uh, Kind of reminded me of like uh, when I did it, kind of reminded me of back when I was in high school and I was on the yearbook staff and we would make the yearbook digital digitally and add the photos and mm-hmm. change the mm-hmm. layouts and the sizes of the pictures and add like uh, creative elements to send to print to come out. Yeah. And, and, you know, technically a yearbook is just another form of Of memory memory keeping. keeping, It is. so um, Memory keeping for your year in high school. And people keep, you know, baby books for their babies. Sometimes they'll keep little mementos, um, tape in the the cards from gifts and photos and maybe a lock of hair and different things like that. Um, That's that's another way to do it. So that's something that I have way too many of. Um, Well, I say way too many. I'm at this point where I have like probably two shoe boxes of cards. Oh yeah. That I've get that I've received from other people. Um, mainly like Travis and Raina will mm-hmm. both give me a Valentine's day card, a mother's day card, a birthday card. There are so many things that you can do with cards. You can make your own book out of cards. Oh yeah. Yeah. I probably could. Yeah. Or make other things mm-hmm. out of the cards. He gets me really intricate, like, yeah, multi well, cards and like stuff. Like mine over so there, I leave mine even... on display on the yeah on the hearth be, or you know on the mantle because they're so. Yeah, I put them in our china hutch and they sit there for like six months and then I go in and swap out the cards the next time I get another. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so there's always some card in there from something, but then they wind up in a shoe box and then like someday I'm gonna have so many cards. But at the same time, like, I don't want to get rid of him because he writes, he's very poetic. He likes to write a lot mm-hmm. inside the cards. So I like to keep them and go back and read them. Um, and I imagine, you know, 20, 30 years down the road, going back and reading those will be really nice. So mm-hmm. I, I keep those. I might just toss those in the hope chest because they're starting to, like, pile up. I have them in my craft room because I thought, you know, I might put them in something you know, like glue them down into a book or something. But then I think, well, how big is this book going to get? <laughs> so I don't know. Yeah. I might I have, just bind them up and stick I them in I actually my- have like one of the very first like scrapbooky type things I made in middle school was I took all of the cards that people had given me that I had in my little keepsake box and I 
turned them into a scrapbook. Mm-hmm. I um, taped them or glued them or whatever to mm-hmm. the pages. Yeah, I did that with like cards and stuff. Like when I graduated from high school, I got, you know, all of those cards from people. Um, mm-hmm. I ended up gluing those down into yeah, my I like, did that, high school scrapbook. Like with some of the baby, uh, mm-hmm. like from baby showers and stuff like that. Those um, got stuck in the baby book or whatever. And and that that's a good way to do those. But like some of the ones like the Valentine's cards and birthday cards. Um, if I ever get around to like actually scrapbooking my life and my birthdays, <laughs> I might stick those cards on those birth or put a pocket, you know, to stick Mm -hmm. them in, um, with that birthday. But some of them, um, I don't know. I, they may just wind up separate or bound together in a box. My Christmas cards, um, I used to take the Christmas cards and take them apart and do a craft with the covers of the Christmas cards. Um, in fact, Kristen and I made, placemats one year um with a bunch of the christmas cards and we had those for years and years and i think they got destroyed in the shed one year Mm -hmm. um they got wet or something um but the last few years i've been punching a hole in them and they're and i used a book ring to hold each year's worth of cards together and i saw this um i don't know if it was heidi swap or Maybe it was Allie Edwards or one of those scrapbooky crafty people. And she had done that. She had punched holes in all her cards each year, put a little ring, a binder ring through it and tied a little bow on it. And she had little hooks or something and she hung them up as part of her decoration. So all oh, the fun. past year's cards. Okay. And that was really cool because they're all just right there on display and you can flip through them every year. Because sometimes the cards are really pretty to look with, or they mm-hmm. have a funny joke, or somebody in the family wrote a really cool um, note inside of it, or something like that. Or there's photos, so yeah. that was that. I like that. I like that idea a lot. That's a cool so idea. I have three or four years of those bound up right now. So um, still memory keeping because. But it's uh it's out there and and along mm-hmm. along that lines of those memory keeping again those those uh t shirt quilts things like that um that's another another one because mm-hmm. you're keeping those memories so I've been doing a lot of decluttering and stuff around the house and I've been thinking about <laughs> this whole time this whole time we've been talking about this when does memory keeping cl- cross the line. Like and become clutter, yeah, yeah. When yeah. are you just living in the past? You know, I think if you're going to it repeatedly all the time to look back through it, mm-hmm. that is living in the past, definitely. Yeah. Um. You know, like if if you're always flipping through those books and longing for those days, mm-hmm. that that's different. Yeah. Um, now, if you're getting together on the holidays with your family and, hey, let's relive some memories and look at these photos mm-hmm. in the albums, that's that's not. That's cherish, cherishing your heritage or your past mm-hmm. or whatever. Mm-hmm. So, um, but yeah, I, th- I there is a fine line there about the things that you keep and how long you keep them. And keeping unhealthy memories, too. And keeping unhealthy memories. But, but even like the, the children's things or whatever, you know, once, once it's beyond the point of you or your children, your, your children or their children being able to use those items, then just holding on to them perpetually is. Right. Yeah. It's one thing like when your kids are like in their twenties and forties and you have like every single item from their childhood in your garage yes you know there's a <laughs> uh, amber's, I, amber's raising yeah, her hand yeah, here. Um, no, that's me yeah. well you know um my uh i still have the burden of three storage units of things of my parents and grandmothers that i'm not really sure what to do with because it's so much stuff that it has become overwhelming that I've just kind of put mm-hmm. off dealing with it. Yeah. 
well, for the past I, five years. I, I have I have the same problem. I mean, right over there behind Kristen is five or six boxes of my mother's belongings. And, you know, some of it's her jewelry and mementos and things that um, she probably doesn't even know what they are anymore because, you know, she has dementia. But also, you know, it's like, what what do I do with those things? I They're part of her. I You know, I there's part of me that doesn't want to just toss them away. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I'm like, what do you do with them? Because... Obviously, I don't. I don't even have time to scrapbook my own stuff. How the you know, how in the world am I going to scrapbook all of right. her stuff? Well, as well, and for you, this my solution doesn't work. But for your parents' things in your storage, if you were to look at a piece of furniture, say you have like a chair, right? Mm -hmm. That like maybe your dad's recliner is in the storage. Take a picture of the recliner. Yes. Go in and write a little story. And in that a journal, and then glue that picture in right on the next page, or or use that's the my just, modern well, the my modern story is. thing. Right. That's exactly what that's it what is. I'm saying you don't have to subscribe to her. No, you program, don't. But but it is an easy way to do in it. In essence, yeah. like you don't need that chair to remember your dad, but which you goes can back tell to your story, story, yeah, and have a picture of it, and then you can let go of the thing. Well, you know, the I guess story's that... probably more valuable than the chair, right? A lot of it is like uh, my mom's antiques that mm -hmm. she was have value to restoring mm -hmm. that I don't want to just throw away. Oh, yeah, yeah. Definitely don't throw and, away. Um, but... Like, uh, I think like pretty much everything of my dad's, as far as that is concerned, I have all of his guitars and those were his prized possessions and I will never get rid of those. I will find some way to artistically display them in my house mm -hmm. or just keep them in the closet and open them up and look at them and run my fingers across the strings. Or learn to play. Or learn to play guitar. Actually, um, one of my students who is a guitar enthusiast, he keeps asking me, so what kind of guitar did your dad have? What kind of guitar did your dad have? And he's like a he's like one of those students that's always looking at guitars online. Mm -hmm. And so I opened it up and I told him and he kinda like gave me this wide eyed look and he said, Um, if this guitar is what you're saying it looks like and what it is, it's worth a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And I was like, Hmm. Not well, that I would ever sell it, right. but well, and mementos. Um, it, it, there's there's a difference here too. Like you're talking about antiques, and you don't want to just throw them away. If they mean something to you, mm -hmm. if they have meaning to you, not mm -hmm. just oh, it belonged to my mother, but if they have relevant meaning to you, like I love this desk. This that I have a I have a, 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 a kitchen set here in my kitchen that was my mother in law's. It has meaningful memories for me that I wanted that when she passed away and it has a lot of memories to me. It has nothing to do with its value monetarily. It has nothing. Well, it does have something to do with it being hers, but, but the main reason I wanted it was because there were so many memories of us at that table and there's worn marks where people's elbows have rubbed on that table and coffee rings on that table and things like that. And it, it has significant meaning to me. So that is something I would never part with. Well, but if it was at an antique table that my mother was restoring, um, and I don't have any particular attachment to it specifically, other than that it belonged to my mother, then that is where you either find someone who would appreciate it, you know, somebody else, uh, you know, related to your mother or a friend of your mother or someone who would like it and you give it to them or you, or you can sell it if it's worth mm -hmm. anything. Um, but it doesn't mean you have to keep all those things. You do not have to keep all of the things that belong to your family. I know. Yeah. I just um, yeah. don't want to deal with them right now. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, no yeah. I'm not um, saying that. I'm I, I, not, I'm not, I'm not saying, saying like that I'm going to keep them. Yeah. <laughs> that was a good solution for the things that you don't have, like, attachments to, but they still represent pieces right. of, right. like, your parents. Um, 
that's a good way to tell a story too because then it's not just the thing then the story it has like a it has thing yeah it has yeah. relevance yes. yeah i mean the reason i still have three storage units really isn't the fact that oh i must keep all of these things it's more of like i i feel like that there is some value to them as far mm -hmm. as the antiques that my mom was restoring that I can either resell them or sell them to somebody that can resell them or donate them to somebody that mm -hmm. needs these things, whereas just taking them out and junking them and oh, throwing yeah. them I, out in the I trash. Never, I, I never, ever myself. suggest just throwing things away because our landfills are too full anyway. Yeah. They are. So I I never suggest people throw just throw things away, ever. Um, I just feel that strongly about it, so... Um, well, I know like when I moved and, uh, got my divorce, I did throw a lot of things away. Well, and sometimes and, you have to, cause I know you had, you had plumbing issues at your house and mold yeah. issues. And, and when my mother, when we moved my mother out of her house, we had to throw a lot of things away because mm -hmm. they were soiled, um, by pet soil over, you know, over years and yeah. they were not salvageable. And so we threw those things away. And and I'm not saying don't ever throw things away because obviously for health reasons, sanitary reasons, there are reasons to throw things away. Mm -hmm. Bro if things are broken, throw them away. Um, my mother was really <laughs> bad about hoarding things that were broken. And, and Kristen has a similar story about this. My mother, um, when my dad got really sick or right after he passed away, my husband was we were visiting her and she came up to him and asked him if he could fix her seal meal. Now, just because my husband is an audio engineer and has some electronics background um, and can repair some electronics things, you know, in her mind, that meant it's electric. You can fix it. Right. And so she brought it to him and said, can you fix this? And he, you know, he looked at it and he was like, no, this is broken. You just need to throw it away. And she refused to throw it away. She said, no, I can't throw it away. Andy bought that for me. And that's my dad. And, and it's like, it doesn't even work. You can't even seal food up in it anymore. It serves no purpose except as a counterweight that's on your table. That's what I'm talking about. Yes. This, okay. Because it has no purpose. Her attachment right. to it was because it was a gift mm -hmm. from my dad. It has no actual right. purpose because anymore. Because in her mind, she's not going to receive any more gifts from him. Mm-hmm. Yes. So she has to keep the ones that she has. Yes. And she, w she could not part with that. And, you know, we did toss that out later, but, um, but yeah, she, she held on to that because that was, even though it didn't work, she had no actual use for it at all. Um, she just couldn't part with it because he gave that, that was something. And she did that with everything he gave her. And so it, her whole house was full of broken things that mm -hmm. they had bought together or that he had given her or that belonged to him. Because at that point, everything in her life is associated to him. To him, yes. Mm -hmm. And so she could not get rid of that, anything. And this, you know, even years later, I mean, even if she went back now, if she was of sound mind, she would probably still be that way to some extent because mm -hmm. she was that same way about her father and his things and you know, even 30 years after he had passed away, you know, well, everything. it is really hard because it when is. I was going through my things and going through my mom's things and like, uh, if there was like something that I was going to get rid of or give away or whatever, I would have like a little, like a uh, thought in my mind. Well, my mom bought me this. Mm -hmm. And then I had to stop and think about it, and I'm just like, well, I have a hundred other things that my mom bought yes. me that are more sentimental to me than yes. this. Yes. And I had to do that with a lot of stuff, especially stuff that was like my stuff that was my mom's personal things. Mm -hmm. And I had to remind myself, well, I have her most cherished items. Yeah. So I really don't need this. You know what? That you, my mom owned. You were her most cherished item. Yep. Yeah, I know. But 
Yes, I I agree that when you if you can sit and distance yourself from those things, um, you know, and look at them, not as oh, but my it belonged to my mother, so it mean it must mean something. It doesn't have to mean something just because your mother bought it or had it or whatever. Um, you like Kristen said, Kristen had the story about the, do you want to tell the story about the vacuum? I don't know what that story is. Oh, maybe I thought it was you with a guy who was, um, maybe it was Marie Kondo or somebody come into the house to help clean up and he had a vacuum that didn't work and the vacuum didn't work. Oh, maybe it was Ashley. I don't know. Somebody I was talking to recently. I thought it was you. Um, the, and I don't know the exact part of the story, but, uh, somebody came to his house and they were helping him you know, get rid of things. And he was this vacuum that, you know, it's one of those old canister vacuums, you know, like, Oh, like that you drag around, you drag around with the big long hose, you know, oh, and, wow. um, a new and, new. and, and he, yes, a new, new, and he <laughs> wouldn't get rid of it. And, uh, and she was like, well, why not? And he was like, well, this is my grandmother's vacuum, but the vacuum doesn't work. And even if it did work, there are better vacuums out there, you know, that actually work well. Mm hmm. Your grandmother doesn't care if you get rid of that vacuum. Yeah. Your grandmother does not care if you get rid of that vacuum. She wants you to have the best vacuum you can have. And she's probably like, why are you dragging that around? Yeah. Right. It Carrying doesn't work. The weight of. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. work. Mm. And it's not your grandmother. The vacuum is not your grandmother. The vacuum is not your grandmother. Yes. Yes. It's not. It, it, her, her spirit is not in that. Her spirit is in you. You can take a picture of that vacuum. You can write a story about how grandma had that vacuum my whole life. And I love to go to her house and use that vacuum or whatever. I like to ride it like a Bronco <laughs> yes. or whatever. And, or, or how you inherited it from her and you used it and used it and used it until you, until it broke and you couldn't bear to get rid of it for the longest, longest, longest time. That story is more important than the actual vacuum. Yeah, it so is. Write the story. It's the story that is important, not the item. So write the story, take the picture, keep that story alive, let go of the things that no longer serve you. That vacuum no longer serves you. And that's a metaphor for life. If I ever heard one right there, <laughs> let go of the things that do not serve you any longer. Um, if those three sheds full of stuff are not serving you, maybe it's time to address them, Amber. <laughs> they, yeah. they are the burden that I keep the albatross around my neck. Yeah, I, I have a whole garage full of these, and I'm I'm right there with you. And Kristen has been cleaning out her garage. I'm, been, I'm over here, like, she's getting teary-eyed because this is actually something I've been really, like, working through is the things that you have are – just that they're things they are items they are inventory i've been hearing this word on a lot of these like decluttering and mm -hmm. and stuff mm -hmm. it's inventory they are not you yep they, they are, are not, not the people they're the associated people with that they're associated with they are not the memory the no. memory is the thing that they are triggers they are for triggers the for the memory mm -hmm. yeah and you can you can have other triggers for the memory that are less intrusive in your life yeah. Than this big box of stuff. Sometimes we keep things like clothes from our past. I let go of a, a skirt that my cousin bought me when I was, was a freshman in college. It was a dress or whatever skirt. And it was like a my graduation gift, gift from my cousin. She took me to Lane Bryant and bought me like a lot of expensive clothes. And... I still had that dress, so I got that in 2002, <laughs> and I just got rid of it, like, two weeks ago, and uh, that was a really big deal for me, and I literally, like, held up the skirt, and my husband could care or couldn't care less, right, <laughs> and I had this whole story about this skirt, like, mm -hmm. I just told him, like, how I used to wear it with this, or it, that skirt represented 20 years of my Yes. Pre-married yes. life. Yes. I used to wear that to like concerts. It was a black, you know, it was very goth looking. And, you know, I'd wear like t-shirts with it. And it, it represented a piece I of I remember me. that skirt. I had a similar one, except mine was completely 100% lace. 
Yeah. And we used to uh-huh. wear them together. Yeah. Yeah. And so I let that go, but I still have the memory. Mm-hmm. But when I looked at it, it reminded me of like. But there's, yeah. this there's other easy. Find time. a picture of yourself with that yeah. skirt on. Yeah. And write, write the story. story. Mm-hmm. Write the story. Tell your story. That was like a hard thing getting rid of like all of my old clothes. I mean, it was a lot easier during COVID when I was selling them to make money. But getting rid of, like, all of my old, like, size 30, 28, size 30 mm-hmm. clothes. Because you're saying that goodbye I had, to an old you. Yeah, like, a, that I had such, I, I guess, a good time in or whatever. And shoes that I, and then the shoes that I had to get rid of because they were molded and stuff like oh, that. Yeah. And shoes were, like, such my identity for the longest time that I had so many pairs of shoes that I just... Had and, to throw away. It was see, really like, tough. If you had kept your shoes for, you know, five more decades, your grandkids will go, oh, yeah, she's a shoe person. But they wouldn't understand why. But you can write a story about your love of shoes. Yes. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. that story will last longer than the thing. Because the thing yes. no longer tells the story after the people have forgotten Yes. What that story represents. Right. Yeah. So, the things don't matter anymore. If yeah. no, if nobody documents the story. The, we have a desk, uh, an antique desk um, back in the back of the house. And it was my father-in-law's desk. It's a roll top desk. Um, at my father-in-law sat at it to do his bookkeeping and everything for years and years and years. And um, that desk, we actually have the Providence for the desk, it belonged to uh, a dentist at one point in time, and it also belonged to the railroad. And so we have some providence for the desk. That makes the desk more valuable because there are stories behind the desk. But when those stories cease to be important, when somebody forgets why that desk was important, mm-hmm. then the desk isn't important anymore. It's not. It's not important because of who it belonged to. It's important because of the stories around it. So, yeah. I like that. I like I like that we as humans are more and more able to tell a story because 2000 years ago we have like no written Well, but there was at that time a long history of oral storytelling yeah. which we have actually lost that art right we um, lost that art and it's you know not as accurate as a photo right. that tells, right you know but there are <laughs> but there are legends that have been told and told and told and sometimes incorrectly and they morph into a, something completely different mm-hmm. but but they are valid nonetheless as memories as lore as mm-hmm our human history. Yeah. And and so those things are important as well, but documenting. Yeah. Well, look at Anne Frank. I mean, she was not a famous person until after her death. Her yes. death. Her father um, published But her just books. by her writing in her diary made her immortal. Yes. And yeah. a crucial piece of our history. Yes. Yes. It tells a, a very poignant Could you just story. imagine, like, someone, like, finding your scrapbook and it becoming, like, the epitome of, well, you know, I, during 2020. COVID, yeah, our COVID dur- During journal. COVID, I kept a COVID journal, and, um, and I encouraged a lot of my friends to keep one as well. It was, like, a little challenge that we made to each other to keep a, dur- a daily journal um, because we were locked down and we weren't going out and... And it just upended our lives so much. And so many people died. And, and so I'm, I, I kept mine for a very, very, very long time. And, you know, a hundred years from now, that's going to be fascinating Mm -hmm. for someone. Yeah. Because it, things will be completely different for them and they will only have heard the history, the facts, the numbers, they won't have that personal face it's like, to that um, story. September 11th, um, mm-hmm. my stu- that happened 21, two years ago almost, 21 and a half years ago, when I was a senior in high school. And, you know, 
most of my all of my students now currently have weren't even born right then and so when i mentioned september 11th i hope like none i had of your students were born then yeah i know right right right, 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 right. <laughs> I, mean, had to, I had to think of it for a second yeah, like wait a minute wait you weren't born then but i remember i mentioned september 11th to one of my students the other day and he kind of cocked his head and he looked at me blinked his eyes for a minute and said that was the thing with the towers right yeah and I was just like blown away like whoa you know yeah. like uh that was such a big deal my senior in high school my senior year in high school that was like well and for those of us who are alive then it it was it, such an impact it, it and, was huge yes right. And and it's kind of like uh, the memories, you know, of the Holocaust, you know, like it's... Uh, September 11th is the Vietnam for us. Like we weren't yeah. there, but it was still very yeah. real and mm -hmm. fresh for those just not much older than us. Yeah. Yeah. It was like, it, it was just like such a big impact to me. And then, you know, none of these kids were alive then. And I just like had to stop and think about it like, man, am I that old you know and like, that uh, and that's why relating those stories you know even if you haven't told the story of where you know where, where were you, you yeah where were you when that happened um that's always a relevant story to tell uh, no matter what the historical you know where were you when martin luther king jr was shot yeah. where were you when, when kennedy died. kennedy was shot where were you when the Twin Towers fell? Where were you? I was you? in first period. Yeah. Like, and, uh, and those things are important. Those things are, you know, important to tell because they had a significant emotional impact. Uh, I'll never and not just emotional. But you're, the, our world changed because of that. Well, and now it's like looking back like, uh, where were you when like, what were you doing how are you feeling when COVID first started mm -hmm. happening, when lockdown happened, yeah. mm -hmm. you know? And and those stories are important to tell as well, because someday there will be people who were not alive then or who were too young to remember what mm -hmm. it was like. Um, and they need to know the significance of that, just like we need to know the significance yeah. of what happened to Anne Frank mm -hmm. or any of the other people who survived untold numbers of stories um and your great great grandkids will find comfort knowing what kind of person you were during covid right yeah and uh i think it was brene brown who had the little quote and i'm probably misquoting her right now but um her quote was something about tell your stories because someday your story will be someone else's survival guide yeah and you know i I totally butchered that quote. I will repair that quote <laughs> um, on the, heard it on the podcast, but yeah, uh, it's a great quote because, because it really is, you know, when people read your history, they learn how they can survive things too. Mm -hmm. So, so that's, um, like I say, there's there's a lot of ways to document those stories. There's a lot of ways to tell your own story. I think it's really important. Um, I know we kind of beat that like a dead horse sometimes, you know, that we say this over and over and over again. Tell your story. Share your voice. Um, be that light for other people in the dark because someday somebody will need that information. Somebody will want to know who you were. Even if the peop you think the people who are around you right now don't, they, they may treasure that someday down the line, especially once you're gone. Um, you know, they, they're not ready to think about you being gone now, so maybe those things don't interest them now. But someday, when they are the age you are now, they're going to want to look back at that and see who you were. And see how you compare. So that's it for this week. Um, I believe Amber is our hostess next week. Yes, and we are podcasting about T 
TikTok and TikTok hacks. Ooh. Oh, we Did were just talking about <laughs> TikTok hack work. So that kind of folds into that very nicely. Social media. We're about social media. There we go. Next week. <laughs> or maybe not just TikTok, but like, did this quote unquote yeah. life hack from social media work? Yeah. I'm, I'm interested in yeah. that because, mm-hmm. yeah. And you said it's TikTok hacks? Well, yeah, TikTok or, hacks or Facebook hacks, whatever. TikTok made me do it. Yeah, TikTok yeah. made mm-hmm, me do it type mm-hmm. things, yeah. Pinterest fail. Yeah, Pinterest. Oh, Pinterest uh, fails. So yeah, a lot of those. <laughs> yes. Oh, boy. All right. Well, I'm looking forward to that. Yes. I think we probably have a lot to share on that topic. <laughs> probably. Probably, <laughs> probably uh, more than we should. Oh, yeah, probably my. more than we think that we're going to share. We probably will. Oh, we always do, don't we? Yeah, okay. Right. Well, I want to give a shout out to um, Red Door Studios and Creative Audio Tech for our equipment and our theme music. And we hope you're enjoying our theme music, too. I love I love our theme music. It's such an awesome job. Um, there are mm-hmm. links for those both um, on our Heard It on the Podcast page. So you can go there. And uh, if you need theme music, Creative Audio Tech, uh, ugh, Creative Audio Tech <laughs> is the guy you need to call. Um, so anyway, uh, that's it for this week. And we hope you'll stick around and come back next week. And we'll be chatting with you then. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.